Okay, what if I tell you that the extraterrestrials we all imagine as little green men may actually look like very normal Earthlings and chill in Europe? This is the Iberian Peninsula, and people living there are under suspicion. Ooh. Here's the reason. Somehow, parts of the most important artifacts that the Iberian civilization called Treasure of Valena are made of metal that simply can't be found on Earth because it's metal from a meteorite. Now let's tackle this step by step. This is the artifact itself, and it's composed of 59 different objects. Bowls, bottles, and bracelets. Hmm, is there a pattern there with all those bees? In total, the find weighs around 20 pounds, of which 18 pounds are 23 and a half karat gold. Now, if you're not a metal specialist, I'll clarify it for you right away. For comparison, 23 karat gold is 95.8% pure gold, so 23 and a half karat is even purer. The remaining percentage goes to other metals to help add strength and durability to the precious alloy. There was also silver, iron, and amber in that set. The artifact could have been pretty straightforward, but for these two, let's call them imposters. Look at this wrought iron bracelet and this hollow hemisphere. Can you see that? Those rusty lines on the hemisphere and the overall weird color of the bracelet do stand out since everything else is made of purest gold. This all started back in 1963, when a researcher noticed a dark leaden metal among the shiny bowls and bottles. The metal was shiny in some areas and covered with a ferrous-looking oxide that was mostly cracked. Now, just so you understand, gold does not usually act this way. Gold is one of the least reactive of all metals, so it won't even tarnish, let alone rust. To figure out where this suspicious iron came from, researcher turned to mass spectrometry, which checks out the mass-to-charge ratio of molecules. Their findings showed that the nickel in the iron is similar to that found in meteoritic iron. Simply put, the bracelet and the hemisphere are of extraterrestrial origin. Ooh. Now, the exact age of the trove is hard to determine, yet it's crucial. We need to know the exact age to see if it coincides with the start of the Iron Age in the Iberian Peninsula. If it does, then no further questions here. But if it doesn't, well, it's, at the very least, weird, if not suspicious. So there's this three-age system. It comprises the Stone Age, then the Bronze Age, and then the Iron Age. The Stone Age is of no importance here, so let's compare the Bronze and the Iron Ages. The Bronze Age began when it was realized that combining copper and tin produced a material that was more durable than either metal alone. This era was all about major upgrades in tools and weapons but two standout inventions were writing systems and the wheel. Then came the Iron Age. This time was all about slowly bringing iron into everyday life. Iron was way easier to shape into cool designs than bronze. Now this was a big deal, because iron, especially transformed into steel, provided significant improvements in all aspects of life. Tools became lighter, cheaper, and stronger compared to their bronze equivalents. You get it? Good. So researchers have long debated whether the treasure dates back to the post-Argaric era or the latter part of the Bronze Age. The most recent study claims that those artifacts were created in 1400 to 1200 BCE. And something really doesn't add up. First off, the Iron Age began around 500 years after these artifacts were crafted. Plus, ancient craftsmen couldn't know back then how to work with metals that landed on Earth approximately 1 million years ago. And while the dates are really hard to explain, there is a logical explanation for the craftsmanship. The theory here is that those metal workers simply had access to the fallen meteorite, and thus, they could study it well and discover its properties before using it for decorative purposes. They could have figured it out through trial and error, and once they knew exactly how to work with this extraterrestrial metal, they proceeded to adorn the artifacts with it. Plus, there were the Phoenicians, who contributed to their craftsmanship. Now, it's true that the Iberian people have been processing metal and making pottery long before the Phoenicians settled on the peninsula. 
but the arrival of new metalworking techniques and the introduction of the potter's wheel enable them to produce better quality goods much faster than before. So, we figured out the extraterrestrial origins of the Iberian artifacts. But guess what? This area is still under suspicion. The reason for that is the language they spoke. You see, for most modern languages people use today, there will always be some proto-language. Say for Italian, Spanish, and French, it's Latin, hence their similarities. But wait, Iberian was largely spoken where modern Spain is. So why isn't Spanish similar to it? Well, the truth is, no language today is similar to the Iberian. Maybe only the Basque language, but it's because of some similarities found in their numerical systems. Basque is classified as a language isolate, or simply unrelated to any other known languages and the only language isolate in Europe. The Iberian language is unclassified. While the scripts written in it have been deciphered to various extents, the language itself remains largely unknown. And look at the alphabet the Iberians had. Looks like it doesn't really belong to our planet. But hold up, this one might be a bit of a stretch. When the Phoenicians came to the peninsula, they brought along their alphabet to the Iberians. But honestly, the Iberians probably weren't keen on just copying someone else's writing system. So they tweaked it until it looked completely different. Let's just say they took some inspiration and ran with it. While linguists can guess to some extent how most characters sounded, actually translating the language is still completely impossible. The Iberian language was non-Indo-European and faded away over 2,000 years ago. And there aren't any similar languages left to help us out. Super frustrating, right? Yeah. We got over 2,000 Iberian inscriptions from tombs, coins, potteries, lead plates, and even cave wall carvings. But aside from a handful of words, we're totally in the dark about what they mean. Now, if we could understand their language, we might have learned that they were great thinkers and all, but we can only contemplate the works of art they left. Iberian culture has a lot of amazing stuff made by talented artisans. We're talking about not just metalwork and ceramics, but also detailed sculptures, textiles, jewelry, and other personal bling. But here's the catch. Making all those luxury items depended a lot on a big farming class. At the heart of Iberian society, most folks were involved in farming and taking care of livestock. Depending on where you were, the types of farming varied. For example, up in the north, they were all about growing grains, while down in Valencia, they focused on producing olive oil and other agricultural aspects. In the west, raising animals was the name of the game. Still, we don't have much information about the day-to-day -day lives of the many people doing this essential work. Yet, on the flip side, we know a lot about the upper class of Iberian society, who control these agricultural resources and hire the artisans. By the 7th century BCE, we start to see a group of Iberian princes who were living the good life, trading with the Phoenicians, and enjoying fancy luxury items. You can spot this elite class in their burial practices. Cremation was the go-to method for funerals among the Iberians, and wealthy individuals were often found in cemeteries with all sorts of lavish goods and funerary sculptures that give us a peek into the fashion and hairstyles of the rich. Interestingly, starting in the 6th century BCE, there was a noticeable drop in the number of recognizable burials, which suggests that these elaborate funeral customs became more exclusive to a small elite. Meanwhile, the fate of the majority – farmers, artisans, soldiers, and laborers – who made up a big chunk of the population remains a bit of a mystery. It used to be a pretty advanced civilization, but it vanished without a trace. Researchers think it could have been due to some massive earthquake. But so far, we don't know for sure. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.